Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm here with my June 2020 book haul. I'm starting with a very exciting book. It's a library book! <laughs> a physical library book in my hands for the first time since March. <laughs> because uh, the DC Public Library opened a couple of uh, their branches for limited times uh, a couple of weeks ago, including the one that is closest to me. So not only did that mean I could go to the library, it meant I had an excuse to go back into DC for the first time since uh, I left my job back in March. <laughs> and yes, I totally am the sort of person who would film a 40 second video of the experience. <laughs> Anyway, back to the book. <laughs> this is Paradise by Toni Morrison, her seventh published novel. Uh, throughout 2020, I have been reading um, all of Morrison's novels, one per month, sequentially, hence the seventh coming up in July. Uh, ostensibly, I'm supposed to be talking about them on the Toni Morrison 2020 Voxer group that Hannah at Hannah's Books so uh, graciously started for us, but I am a little ahead of everyone else, I think. Uh, I decided to use my coronavirus time to continue on with the original schedule, just because I always seem to have so much to read waiting in the wings. And I've really been enjoying the experience. I'll be talking more about Toni Morrison in my next video, my mid-year check-in slash freak-out tag. <laughs> but anyway, I will now read from the back uh, to tell you what this book is about. And you know, this is uh, the special penguin printing, so there's going to be some laudatory praise on here, well deserved. They shoot the white girl first. With the rest, they can take their time. So begins this visionary work from a storyteller Newsweek hails as the last classic American writer, one who has been called a major figure of our nat national literature, and simply the best writer in America. Toni Morrison's first novel since she was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature Paradise opens with a horrifying scene of mass violence and chronicles its genesis in an all-black small town in rural Oklahoma. Founded by the descendants of freed slaves and survivors in exodus from a hostile world, the patriarchal community of Ruby is built on righteousness, rigidly enforced moral law, and fear. But 17 miles away, another group of exiles has gathered in a promised land of their own. And it is upon these women, in flight from death and despair, that nine male citizens of Ruby will lay up their pain, their terror, and their murderous rage. In prose that soars with the rhythms, grandeur, and tragic arc of an epic poem, Toni Morrison challenges our most fiercely held beliefs as she weaves folklore and history, memory and myth, into an unforgettable meditation on race, religion, gender, and a far-off past that is ever-present. So yeah, I mean, this seems like uh, it's very much in line with uh, a lot of uh, what Morrison writes about and the style that she writes about, uh, perhaps even more on the brutal side than some. I guess I'm reminded of Song of Solomon, where there's uh, the group of vigilantes who uh, takes uh, revenge against the white community whenever a, a black member is killed, but we see them more at a distance. We might not see this as in as much of a distance, but uh, I will be reporting back in July after I read this. And I did buy three books this month. This is the Harp and the Ring series by Alana C. Meyer. But before I go more into them, I do have another sort of political subject uh, to bring up, I suppose, or to admit to, in that uh, I bought the first two books used from Half Price Books. Uh, my reasoning is, is uh, well, I certainly don't have the funds to be buying uh, lots of uh, new books, uh, and as such, I've been trying to sort of find different venues of uh, used books uh, 
that I can support throughout uh, coronavirus. Uh, and so I just sort of randomly thought up half price books, but I, I wish I had done a little bit of research on them first. Some of their coronavirus behavior has come into question, and I'll link to information down below, namely in the way that uh, they've been furloughing or more often um, laying off uh, a lot of their staff uh, without a lot of notice, and there's been pushback about that. It's obviously a pretty scary time to be unemployed and without benefits. I myself uh, am currently furloughed and submitting claims to DC unemployment. Uh, I realize companies are in a tricky position. Uh, I'm a little on the fortunate side in this equation, really, because uh, for my company, uh, a lot of the employees uh, can work from home and are continuing to work. Uh, my project can't work from home, but uh, we're a small minority, and as such, uh, I'm furloughed and I've kept my health benefits. And I don't know how other companies who uh, wouldn't have most of their workforce being able to work would be able to handle that or not. Uh, <laughs> It's one of those things, too, about the American system where our health care is tied into our employment. <laughs> Frankly, I think the coronavirus, if anything, is teaching us of the downfalls of that system. So now this book haul is more political than most. <laughs> I can't undo these purchases, and I also want to acknowledge I know that companies are in hard spots with the coronavirus, but it felt important to note what's going on and that uh, it's worth noting that a lot of people are saying that uh, half price books didn't handle this the way that they should have. I did buy one of the books new. Uh, this is the final book uh, in the Harp in the Ring sequence, uh, which was just published a couple of months ago, The Poet King. In fact, I uh, bought it uh, perhaps a bit overpriced because I used uh, bookshop.com. They're this relatively new organization that uh, is trying to bolster sales for indie bookstores because uh, they have more access to wider book acquisitions, and of course so many people are buying online anyway. But through the site you have the option of uh, supporting a uh, local store, an indie store, uh, so the price does ratchet up a little bit because of that. But uh, I decided to support Solid State Books, uh, which is a DC-based uh, bookstore, which I've really been missing. Uh, there's something so charming about the whole experience of going to Solid State Books, like uh, if you uh, come into Union Station, you can take the H uh, Street trolley uh, a couple blocks down and uh, just get off uh, relatively uh, in front of the bookstore, and uh, I've been there for uh, banned book scavenger hunt events and readings, and uh, they've just uh, been a really nice uh, place uh, to go browse and buy books, and uh, I'll leave a link down below. I'm hoping uh, to support them in person sometime soon. <laughs> Anyway, the Harp in the Ring sequence is adult fantasy, there, uh, and I do want to reread the whole series, hence buying <laughs> the three books. Uh, I'm not sure entirely how much I remember of uh, the first two. Uh, they're also kind of sort of standalone-y, so uh, I figure I can read from the flap of this one and hopefully not give too much away. <laughs> Prophecies unfold. Myths reveal truths. Danger becomes real. After a surprising upheaval, the nation of Chamberlain has a new ruler, Elisandiar, who proclaims himself the first poet king. Not all in court are happy with this regime change, and Rihanna secretly schemes against him while she investigates a mysterious weapon he hides in the bowels of the palace. Meanwhile, a civil war rages in a distant land, and former court poet Lynn Amaristoth gathers allies old and new to return to Tamerlan in time to stop the coronation. For the Poet King's ascension is connected to a darker, more sinister prophecy that threatens to unleash a battle out of legend unless Lynn and her friends can stop it. So yeah, I mean this is a me uh, type of book because this fantasy is about poetry and art and not so much about uh, battles, although perhaps they are <laughs> insinuating that a battle might be coming, some sort of conflict anyway. Of course, uh, all books do need some sort of conflict, but I like where she goes with this. These books are so lyrical and fantastical in their writing, and uh, I just love the fact that we have more of a focus on something other than military might, uh, and that, uh, that 
people who are artists actually wield a lot of power in these books. So uh, I think for the time being, I'm going to read this one soon, but I do intend to read uh, the entire series again in the future. So that about covers it for me now. You can also find links to all of these uh, books, their Goodreads pages, linked down below. I will be back uh, in a couple days time, I hope, with my aforementioned mid-year check-in freakout tag. Uh, I've been planning for it for a while. I've been pretty excited and watching videos. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty uh, fun and upbeat. <laughs> Hopefully not too rambly, because it seems like I keep adding books to talk about, so time to rein it in and actually make the video. <laughs> in the meantime, hope you're all having a good weekend. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.